Okay, so we've got a 2018 Citroen Berlingo. Um, it's got the DV6 1.6 HDI. It's a 625 Enterprise model with the AdBlue. Um, and today we're just going to be doing a, a service on it. Um, so what you want to do is locate the oil filter. Now the oil filter is in behind this. So you just need to remove this pipe to gain access. You can actually buy, you can actually work by the water pipes. So you can, so you can just about make it out, just in between. Right, and we've got the fuel filter over here at the back. Um, our filter as well, and draining the oil underneath. Um, so. What we're going to do, we're going to focus on doing the oil filter and air filter um, and oil first and then we'll do the fuel filter last and I'll do a step by step guide on how to bleed this up, okay? Okay, so you want to start by taking these three uh, Torex screws off. Want to be on doing this free uh, flip. That allows you to take this off. Absolutely mock it. Gonna get the iron line. Okay, so what we're doing, we need to get this pipe out and that'll allow us access in here. Okay, so it's a 27mm socket. Uh, just get the end of this and always make sure you put a bucket underneath roughly where you're working. Now, I'm lucky I've got the ramp here. So the bucket is positioned underneath and now you're good to loosen There we go You want to be checking the condition of the oil filter and then that will define that it's been changed and if it looks like crap um, it's been overdue so if it's decent condition like that, you know that it's been uh, serviced decently. I will be using today. I will be using uh, total quartz, um, zero watt over thirty, um, and this is probably one of the best ones you could use for this. Um, it's also recommended by Peugeot and Citroen as well. Um, so always use the best gear in these. Um, aye, a lot of people would argue and say, "Oh, I can get the oil cheaper off eBay. If I bring my parts to you, would you fit them?" Well, not. I, I don't like uh, doing that. I don't like fitting parts that people have brought brought themselves. I like to get my own stuff, knowing that I'm using quality products and it's not going to be messed up. Um, so always keep that in mind if you bring your car to me I don't want to be fitting other parts um, like obviously if it's aftermarket stuff and you're wanting stuff fitted that's no problem but when it involves stuff like that so what we'll do the next step will be I'll get this filter off and I'll get that rubber off as well and then whenever the I'll get the oil out of it and then whenever the stuff comes in I'll do a wee video on the build back up Do you 
using a 21mm socket um, to remove the oil. Um, always be gentle whenever you're removing this here and do it very very slowly because um, you don't want it to go all over the place. Doing stuff like this, always veer away from using like electric ratchets and things like that because um, you can thread things very, very easily. You can or also round the tops off them if they're on too tight. I've had occasions where I went to service a vehicle and King Kong has obviously tightened things up. Um, and I've run into difficulties when it's came to doing the work to it. So not a lot of people do this here, but I do. I like to change the washer. Um, so the washer goes over, and always make sure it's a copper washer. Okay, just a, a, a metal washer just doesn't do it, it needs to be a copper one. Okay, so we've got a nice copper washer. Also, with another wee tip as well, you want to be checking the condition of the oil. And feel if there's any grit or anything in it. Like this. There's already oil, oil at the bottom of this anyway, um, but that, what, that is uh, quite decent oil. Um, it's decent condition, I would say you can get longer out of this. But these vans get serviced every 8,000 miles, so they're always kept at their peak. Um, it just keeps them reliable for the road. Um, we've got two of these in today, two basically identical ones. Um, in for a server, so I thought I would do a wee video on one of them, um, and then at least you'll be able to, to see what the rig model is with them. Okay, so I'm putting the 27 mil, no, 20, 21 mil back on. 27 mil is for the filter up above the oil filter, just in case you think I'm tripping. You just nip it up with your hand. And then just do the last bit with the ratchet and you'll know go wrong. Just remember, don't over tighten it. Perfect. Okay, um, what I'll do, I'll spray that with a wee bit of brake cleaner, just to clean it. There you go, nice and clean. Just hit it with a wee wipe with a rag. Good workmanship. As I keep stressing, when a, a vehicle passes its MOT, that's it okay for the day, right? Now, although there's nothing being reported with this van, any problems in that, um, there's not been any, any problems reported, it's always good just to have a regular checkup on it, and check and see if everything is up to scratch. Also, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some antifreeze in it as well, uh, and just make it a full service. Uh, put some antifreeze in it, and if it's needing any screen wash, we'll do that as well. But aye, uh, just got to wait for the parts. I think that's the parts arrived. Oh, it's Dinger, Sting Bro. How's it going, bro? You got this some parts for me? Navy. Unbelievable. I wish I had have kept recording there. But that absolute pleb has just left without giving me anything. So I'm gonna to need to go down and see if he's left anything. Right, so there we go. Left it as ours. Absolute reject. Okay, we hey celebrations, the parts have arrived. Okay, so you get your wee hook, right, and you get this wee bit of rubber and peel the old one off. 
and you want to be putting the new one back on. So the wee groove that you took the other one out of, just place it, hold it with your thumb, and you just skim it round. Right. Now your oil filter, make sure that you have checked thoroughly um, that your oil filter um, is the right one. Basically this here bit here, that seat in a hole at the bottom. Right, I don't know if you'll see too well here. You need to make sure that the oil filter is seated in properly. So that's it sitting in perfect. Right, and obviously the other one, once you've cleaned it out with a uh, brake cleaner and give it a wipe, it's ready to put on. Because you really don't want any unnecessary dirt um, getting in. So again, that's uh, 27. Uh, so we just want to tighten that up. And again, just uh, put it put it in and get it threaded up by hand first before you go near it with the ratchet. It's nice and tight. Just don't over tighten it. Just wait till it. Just nip it up a wee bit. So one nice shiny new air filter. Make sure it's seated in correctly. There's nothing worse than it hanging out when you're tightening it up. Just poor workmanship. It seats in at the back, so make sure that you've got it seated correctly before you go to tighten the end up at the front. So once you've got your T20, just nip it up the hand first. So make sure that you've got the threads in. Yeah, jobs are good and we need to put this here wee pipe back on as well. Just share a bit of light in the matter. Always make sure you clean up your area, any mess or anything that you've made, just make sure it's cleaned up. Okay, so we want to be adding the oil and it's three, three litres and three quarters. So we want to be checking this, I'm just going to close this over and turn it over.
Right, low level, now perfect. Good job. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for. And um, we're doing the fuel filter. We put the light. So you will be needing a number eight socket, eight millimeter socket. You'll be needing a 24 millimeter socket. You also need the wee dreaded hooky. Now he's going to reach in and disconnect all this. Always make sure the key is out the ignition. Never ever work on a vehicle when the key's in the ignition because you're only asking for trouble. Right, so we're going to work on these here jobbers as well. I've never actually worked out what I need to take these off, but I've always found how can I bout with the wee pin, with the wee hook, to freeze it off. Always put your bits somewhere safe. Okay. Just get all your pipes out the way. You want to be getting your 24 mil in on the top. Now I'll need to use a smaller uh, depth 24 mil. So 24 mil on the top of this. Doesn't really give you much room to work in, but you gently, gently. Loosen this. But not too loose. Because um, you want to be doing that over at the bucket. Because you don't want diesel to go all over the place because it can get quite messy. Okay, if you get the wee 8mm one, you've had to get three of these 8 mils. Um, you've got one further down. You've got an extension. So by this stage you'll be ready to lift the filter out. You just put a wee rag down and that'll stop the place from getting covered. And so there we go, one fuel filter. Unfortunately the video malfunctioned um, and I never got to record the filter swap. So I've now got the top on RT Diag plugged in. Uh, just running a wee health check um, of the vehicle uh, before I continue just to see if there's any underlying issues that need addressed before we continue. Okay the following procedure for bleeding the fuel system is you turn the key on all the way around uh, before you start it, wait 10 seconds, turn it off, do it again for 10 seconds and then turn it off uh, do this repeatedly for approximately 10 times this will allow you to fill up the filter um, with diesel now the method for doing this um, once you've done the bleeding process you start the vehicle um, you hold the accelerator to 2,000 revs once it starts and hold it there for about 20 seconds. That should be the bleeding process over. So the procedure is relatively straightforward. You can't go wrong. So you've probably noticed by now that the airbag light's on. The dongle for the auto diag was still plugged in and the computer was still connected to the vehicle and um, so i done another check and it was coming up there was a, a short in the airbag system um, couldn't understand what had happened because we haven't disrupted anything to do with the airbags um, so i was racking my head trying to find out what what caused it to come on uh, because it it was just completely weird, it shouldn't have done that. Then it dawned on me, the top done, still being plugged in. Um, could that have been the cause of why it was coming on? You know, 
seems a bit far fetched, but basically, whenever after I deleted the codes, they kept coming back. Um, so I didn't really know what to do. So I ended up, I just deleted it again, disconnected the dongle, disconnected the machine, um, like obviously switched it off and started the vehicle again and the airbag light went off so I'm putting it down to just having the machine plugged in to be honest um, it does seem a bit far-fetched but the lights off and everything's fine and the job's done so I'm not gonna uh, mock it and one of the other faults that was coming up was the aerial for the DAB radio now it's a common fault on these um, basically the fault lies with an earth that's on the rear brake light um, so I'm just going to re-earth that and put it back together again and hope that it solves it um, Okay, so we're draining the radiator pipe because there isn't a bleed nipple to do it. Um, so we're going to use the specific ones for these spring clamps. Um, obviously before you do that you undo the cap at the top of the reservoir um, and then that means you get a steady flow. Um, Nothing's getting jammed. Okay, so we're going to get your bucket underneath to catch all the stuff coming out of it. That was a bit savage. Just enable you've got all the coolant out of it before you replace the pipe back on. Okay, so let's see, that's good enough for me. Get it back on again. Put it back in its place and release. So we just gotta put it down on the ground and do up the antifreeze mix for it. Okay, so we're ready to put the fluid in and just gonna line it up. Uh, I'm using blue antifreeze, um, some people prefer to use red or whatever, but I'm just using what I've got on the shelf. That's good enough for me. Now to bleed it up, you'll need to take this pipe off again. We'll get the pipe off and just need to get in here onto the bleed nipple. There's no air coming out of that. So we'll replace that back on. Okay, so you want to be topping the fluid back up again to its level. I'm just going to have a wee look around the engine to see if there's any more bleed valves because I know that some of these have a couple of them. Okay, so there doesn't seem to be anything visible um, to bleed it any other bit. 
Um, so I'm just going to replace the lid. And I'm also going to get this wee pipe back on. That's everything back to normal. Um, okay. And we're just going to start it. And I'm going to release the lid after a couple of minutes um, to see if there's any pressure. And then the next plan of action is to get it up in the air and I'm just going to give it a wee check over just in case I see anything that could maybe be dangerous or needs a guess and I'll take a wee video of it as well. Absolutely everything, everything down to the wheel bearing, um, drop links and track loadings, uh, your CB boot as well, everything seems to be fine. There's no any holes in the exhaust or anything, so everything's good to go. Okay, so the plan of action is we want to get the service light, the wee triangle with the explanation mark out. So you turn the key round till the lights come on, right? You want once it's sorted here, right? Oil okay. You are wanting to hold this here wee dot one down, and this basically does the reset for your miles, right? So turn the key off. Keys off, you still keep it held down, then turn the key back on so it counts down from 10 to 0. Okay, so that's it back to 0, right? And you're ready to keep holding on it, turn the key off, right? Release when you turn the key on. It's telling you that the service is due in 15,600 miles. And that's the job done. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll be muchly grateful. Thank you.